it is August 5th, uh, 2024. And um, basically this is today's rant. So I really want my channel to be about the fact that we need to look at the small pieces. A lot of people, I think, understand that there's something wrong, something's off, but I don't think people fully understand how we've gotten here and why. And there are people that do, um, but I think there's a lot of people that are very kind. They care about their communities. They're struggling to survive. And some people just put their head in the sand because it's so overwhelming and it feels so negative. But, and I, and I hear a lot, well, there's nothing we can do about it. And I do think there's something we can do about it. It is communicating with one another. It is coming together instead of being divided. And it is about understanding things. And so to me, it's about taking small pieces and kind of breaking them down to understand more of the bigger like pie to how we have gotten here as a society. And there's so many intricate levels and there's so many great people out there that are talking about these different things and so much more in depth and they're experts. I'm just an average person looking at the average things that I deal with on a daily basis. And I'm like, I wonder, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. So the one thing that I really wanna talk about today, and it just, um, I think it's so important because it's just a small piece of the financial stuff that we deal with and our parents have dealt with and their parents have dealt with. And it truly is about like, this is a small piece to look at the fact that we have to be more engaged with our money, with our finances and holding people accountable that have the access to those things. And I thought what was really interesting is originally there were pensions. So if you worked, there was a pension, your employer would contribute a certain amount of money and that money would be there upon retirement. And it was part of your like your employment package and pensions were pretty successful but what ended up happening is that these people were getting this money and um basically well for one there was too much financial risk so one thing that when i search it up it talks about pensions being a cost and financial risk to the employer um however with that said basically it was their responsibility but with them having access to that extra money or supposedly investing it there was a lot of um, misuse of the funds or them not putting all the funds in because of course they were greedy they were wanting to keep the money because they had a way like people with money and corporations and businesses and all of that they know how to leverage their money you know they're gonna hold on to as much money as they can and get as much extra interest on that money that they have their money works for them so if they're not putting that money into a fund for us in our retirement and our pensions, they're going to keep it and they're going to invest it and they're going to make interest on our money. Um, now, if they invest badly, that money's going to go away. And I think there was also a lot of pensions where people stole from them that had power and access to that. So moving forward, we go into um, the Great Depression and SSI basically came out of the Great Depression. The Great Depression was so severe. I think it was a point where as a country, we started to realize like things were bad. People were not eating children, you know, elderly were starving. Um, children were starving. I remember my grandma, like it was, you know, she was so tight with food. Um, and we, we ate a lot of like, you know, um, SOS, you know, uh, shit on shing or, um, I'm saying it wrong, but basically it's gravy and like cheap meat on toast, you know, a lot of beans and they, they barely were surviving. So then SSI rolls out and SSI is there because there was an issue with always it had been where as the elderly generation phased out, the younger generation would help provide and offset that family took care of family. But during the great depression, the younger generation, the working generation were having a hard enough time just surviving on their own, let alone being able to feed their, their aging family members. And so, SSI basically addressed old age poverty and fixing that. But what it also addressed is imagine as a, as a society where it's dire, we were imploding and the people are unhappy. And when people get unhappy and everybody is struggling, that's when they start to get like, governments can get overturned and overthrown. So how do we appease the people? And I think it's a whole like the carrot, right? So the carrot then became SSI. It appeased the people. Well, we're here, we're gonna offset you know, old age poverty, it takes it off of the younger people. And it created another form of basically a, a pension. But fast forward, if you look at SSI, what happened with SSI? So pension plans ended because of misuse of funds and fraud. Now SSI is literally in the exact same boat. I mean, it's 
it's going to not even be there anymore. And it, this is something that we've all directly have paid into. I mean, just sit and think with that. We have directly paid into something that is supposed to be there and it is not there. People higher up have used and misused and create like done fraud and everything with our money. Um, so then you also have, so then the next little thing they roll out that's been out there, um, overlapping with SSI because they realize that there's no way SSI is going to be able to, to help people survive. So they start with this, the 401k, the number one reason why 401k has been sold to the people is to, to help us have individual responsibility for our financial future and our retirement. Again, people like how do they roll these out? And I mean, this has been something that was, I think really solidly rolled out in 1980. Um, I know since I've been in the working class, like the 401k has been around, um, yet there is absolutely no education about the 401k. And it is again, another thing that comes out of our check that we pay in towards that's supposed to be there for us. And they're going to invest it. And they give us these couple buckets to invest in and we have to select it or they auto select it for us based off of whatever criteria we work. How are we answer those questions for how is that individual financial responsibility? And then we have these investors and it's like, none of us even understand the game and we watch it go up and down, you know? And I just think about the lady that I knew that retired with 180,000 less because it was a bad year and they lock it up. So if you're a, like mine, I mean, it was at 2% negative, then it's 3%. Now I'm over 4% negative in my 401k. And everybody's like, oh, well, over the course of this many years, you're going to be ahead 8 to 12%. What if you find something else that you believe in um, and that you want to invest in and you don't have the ability because, again, they locked it up. They assign penalties for you touching your money that you've already worked for. And everybody's like, well, you got to pay your taxes on it. I mean, don't even get me started on the tax thing because I always thought being a good citizen was paying your taxes because it's going to go to your roads, your streets, your teachers, your fire department, your police department. Um, and all of those are the most underfunded, underfunded things. Um, and so I'm like, for them to assess additional penalties on our money is just, it's just asinine. But I want there to be some realization and I don't want to keep rambling because I always go down these rabbit holes and I can't kind of close it up. But the reality of it is, is we need to be aware of these different things that have rolled out because the government keeps putting these carrots for us to chase and appease us thinking that, okay, well, we'll get through this. We get through this, you know, and the reality of it is it is not structured for success for us. They are draining us um, slowly and surely. The middle class during all of these programs have only gotten smaller, uh, especially after the baby boomer generation. And I just think it's important to look, just look at everything in your life and just question it. You know, um, it doesn't mean that it's wrong and it doesn't mean that it's right and that, but just ask yourself some questions, understand the history behind it, understand why it is here today. And is it truly beneficial for, for you and your family um, as to what it's being sold to you as? Um, just like if you go to buy a car, it's always like, amped up it's always oversold you get home and it's like not the truth an rv uh, i mean all that stuff it's the same thing we're being sold a bill of goods uh, but i anyways that's my rant i need to just end it because i'll just ramble on and circle around and that's not fun for anybody so everybody take care and thank you for listening